Let's talk about what's called Newton's method. Really? The Newton method? Let's look at the history of this method. At the very least, it should be called the newton raphson method. And in fact, it should be called the newton raphson simpson method. And as a matter of fact, you could completely remove Newton's name from this method and simply call it the viet raphson simpson method, and that would be more accurate. The so-called newton raphson method is a method to find roots of uh, equations of the form f of x equals zero. And it's a very elegant method in that you start from a point xn that is close enough to a root that we're trying to find, and then you trace the tangent line at that point, and instead of taking xn, we take this other root that is closer to the actual root. And by iterating this method over and over again, you get closer and closer to the actual root of the equation f of x equals zero. And if you have already computed the derivative of your function f, then the method has this very simple recurrence relation that you can apply over and over again and get closer and closer approximations of the root of the equation f of x equals zero. For the history of Newton's method, I recommend this uh, paper. So where did this beautiful method come from? Well, the first instances of the method that we know of appear in work of Arab mathematicians, in the work of Al-Biruni in the year 1000, in the work of Al-Kashi in the year 1400 or so. And then later on, we see that Francois Viette applies a very similar method of perturbations to find solutions of polynomial equations. Viette's work was actually very influential at the time, and Newton, of course, knew of Viette's work. He learns of Viette's method to find solutions about in the year 1664, and he does some small modifications to Newton's credit, where he makes the perturbations just be linear perturbation. So he perturbs a nearby solution by a linear amount in every time he does this, but in a very cumbersome way. Let me explain what Newton actually does. Let's apply Newton's crappy version of Newton's method to find a root of the polynomial x cubed minus 2x minus 5. The polynomial equation x cubed minus 2x minus 5 equals to 0 has a root that is near x equals 2. So what we're going to do is perturb that 2 by a linear factor to find a better solution, a uh, closer solution to the actual root. To that end, let x be 2 plus p. p is the perturbation factor. And plug it back in into the original equation. Then we get a new equation p cubed plus 6p squared plus 10p minus 1 equals 0. And now we're going to find an approximate root of this polynomial. Newton finds that a root is about 0.1. So we now do another linear perturbation of that polynomial. Let p be 0.1 plus q, find a polynomial in q, and then find the root of that polynomial, which is q is about minus 0.0054. And then just keep going like this in this very ad hoc way that is really messy and not workable. And then it was the mathematician Joseph Raphson who took that messy, cumbersome method that is ad hoc and it works sort of like one step at a time and made it into a recursive formula that you can apply over and over again the same formula and find closer and closer solutions to the root of your equation. The formula that we know today as Newton's method that involves the derivative of the function f was not introduced until 1740 when the mathematician Thomas Simpson realized that those perturbations would be best explained using the derivative of the function f. So Newton is once again getting credit for some formula that he barely improved the work of Vied, who uh, in turn was improving work of some Arab mathematicians. And the formula that we now use and love is actually the product of the work of Raphson and the work of Simpson.